What's up guys and welcome back to another Pokemon Switch video. Now in the last episode at the end I asked you the question for today and that topic and question itself was game structure. The question being how has the structure of the game changed over time going from red, blue and yellow all the way up to Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And primarily what we're covering today is the structure of the game i.e. How the game plays. Does it offer you any choice of what you do? Is it a single line of you do this, you do that, you do this, do that, etc.? How has that changed? Was it different in the past? Is it different now? Yeah, and how can we improve it possibly? Or how could it be improved? Because we have no say in the matter in the future. So before we get into the nitty gritty of Pokemon today, we're actually going to take a look at, again, Zelda. We spoke about this last episode looking at Breath of the Wild, but Zelda has a good sort of case study for game structure. And for that, I'm going to sort of loop into uh, Mark Brown here, who does a great series on YouTube called Game Makers Toolkit, along with a sub-series called Boss Keys. These are two series looking at just game design in general, as well as the structure and design of Zelda's dungeons. Now, in one of the videos of Boss Keys, he talks about, primarily, Link Between Worlds, one of the Zelda games of course, and mentions just at the start of that video about the structure of the Zelda games. Now of course I'd recommend going and watch that video and possibly a few more of his videos because it's a great series. Uh, so I'll put links down below in the comment section and in the description uh, if you guys want to go and you know watch that now or later or anything like that. But we're going to pick out a few sort of clips, or not clips, but um, you know frames from that video to talk about and just sort of get an idea of what I mean. So first we look at the original Zelda, or Mark looks at the original Zelda, and you can see here, here is the dungeon structure for that game. You have four available at the start, and then you've got one more to do sort of after that, and then a bit more choice, and that's it. And that's a really open structure, because you've got four different ways to really start the game. This is obviously because the original Zelda was a very open plan, there wasn't much to it, it was very bare bones. Um, but it was a great structure nonetheless, because you could do what you, whatever you wanted. You could explore the, the most of the map and go in four out of the eight dungeons without even having a single item. Um, and that was really good. However, as Mark looks through some of the Let's Zelda games, for example, here Ocarina of Time, it's become a bit more linear. So you got to do three dungeons in a single row. You get a choice of two, and then you get a choice of you know the third one, and then you get a choice of the last two. So it's not not as open plan and free form as it was used to be. Um, but also then because it's the link, link between worlds video, Mark throws out the structure of that game, and it's it's a pretty good structure because you have one introductory dungeon at the start, a couple of dungeons again just getting used to the game and then you can do six more dungeons in whatever order you want. Uh, now of course if you've played A Link Between Worlds and as Mark talks about in the video there is a reason or there were changes that had to be made to implement this, uh, namely the item system. Usually in Zelda you have to get to a, go to you know, an item to get a dungeon to get an item and then you have to sort of step through it like that whereas the items in Link Between Worlds are hireable, so you can just get the item anyway, you don't find it in a dungeon, uh, which makes it more open plan, and similar things and considerations would have to be made for a Pokemon game, and of course that's what we'll actually talk about now, so of course if you want to watch the video uh, covering that and all of other Mark's videos, I will you know, cover or drop a link down below somewhere, so look for that if you want to, but for now we're going to move on like start looking at the game structure of Pokemon games, so while Zelda has the dungeons and the temples, Pokemon, of course, has the gyms or the trials in, in the newer games uh, for us to look at the structure of, because that really denotes, like, you go here and do this main thing. It's sort of what you're building up to in the end. For Zelda, yes, you're building up and you're training to go to each dungeon. Pokemon, you're training to go and battle each gym. So starting off with red, blue, and yellow, we can look at the structure for this. Now, of course, the main structure in Pokemon games is gyms. However, for red, blue, and yellow, um, another helpful thing for this diagram is also the evil team moments. Now, this isn't, doesn't really apply for future games because they are in a linear fashion, but with Pokemon uh, red, blue here, you can see that you have an option. So first up, you start with going to Pewter Gym, you go onto Cerulean Gym, and you open the ability to use Cut in the field. Now, you've got to go down to Vermilion City to get Cut from SSN, but after that, you don't have to go to the Vermilion Gym, you don't have to battle it. It's not required for you to leave that town. You can go straight on all the way over to Celadon Gym, and you can battle Celadon Gym there, or Rocket Hideout. Um, and of course, once you're in Rocket Hideout, you can go on further, you can do Pokemon Tower, you get the, the, um, the Poker Flutes, which means you can go on further into Silph Co and Saffron Gym, and all of this you know, opens up a load more. Whereas the Vermilion Gym, you don't actually have to fight until you want to actually battle the Viridian Gym. Uh, same with the Cities Engine there, so it gives you a load of options that open up there. Now, as I said, this is really the only game that actually features an evil team event to progress like that. Usually they are just in between gyms, so I thought I'd put it on here. 
but it's not really relevant for anything else. So you can see Red and Blue offered you a fair bit of choice there. However, if we then move on to further games, we can see whatever choices that they offer. So Gold and Silver are similar. Uh, you get a very straight line up to Ecruteague, and then you can actually get the option to go and challenge Olivine, Cyanwood, or Mahogany Gym. So you can go over to Mahogany, challenge Price there, and do all of that, all the Lake of Rage stuff. And you don't actually have to get the, you know, 6th or the 7th or 5th or 6th badge at all until you've done all of that to begin with. Similarly, of course, what most people do is head all the way over to Olivine City, cross the sea to Cyanwood, battle Cyanwood, return, battle Olivine, and then finally go over to Mahogany. Whereas you do get given the option. But that's the only option here, really, and you have to have then beaten all the other 7 of the gems to get over to Blackthorn. Then Ruby and Sapphire offers you a bit of option again, but it's not really an option, it's just more of something you can skip. You don't have to battle you for Jim because all it gives you is the ability to use Flash, it's not required. Similarly with Fortree, you just get the ability to do Fly, so you can skip it until you want to challenge the Pokemon League. Moving further up, we have Diamond and Pearl. These only offer one choice, and that's after you beat the Turner, do you want to go to Veilstone or do you want to go to Pastoria? You have to battle both to progress the story, but you can go one way or the other. The only difference is the fact that you are directed towards Veilstone, so most people do challenge that Jim first, as opposed to Pastoria, but you can actually skip over it and go all the way down to Pastoria to our battle Crash Awake first, and then return up to Veilstone. Similarly, Platinum is the same, just obviously we have Heart Home before that, there is no real difference there. And then moving on to Black and White, this is where it all goes a little bit downhill. You see, this is a single straight line. Because of scripted story events and stuff like that, you have to battle the gyms in order. You have to go to Striton, then you get the ability to go to Nacreen, then once you've done Nacreen, you get these stuff in you know, Pinwheel Forest, so then you can finally go to Castellia. Similarly, there's uh, you know, cutscenes and whatnot to prevent you going up, up to Nimbasa, and then Drift Vale, and similarly, the whole way through, there are cutscenes similarly like before or after every gym or town that prevent you from going further, uh, and that, that really is the pattern we're going to see carry on here, because if we look at Black 2, White 2, same sort of story, then we move on to X and Y, same sort of story, and then, unfortunately, we want to Sun and Moon, and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, you can see the same story yet again, there is no difference there at all. So, what does this mean? Well, as we saw, Red and Blue had some options to begin with. They were the most open of all of the games in terms of what gyms you can challenge in what order. However, we need to actually take a step back and look how that pans out. As I mentioned, you don't have to battle Vermilion Gym, you don't have to battle Celadon Gym. You can leave them until the end, until you want to you know, battle Viridian. But that doesn't really happen. You know, Obviously some people have done it, but I didn't, in any of my playthroughs, skip Vermilion Gym or skip Celadon Gym and not do any of them until Viridian. Now many people I know have skipped Saffron Gym and go to Fuchsia and then Cinnabar before you can go back to do Saffron, because Saffron is a harder gym. But generally, you follow the route, because if I put up a green line showing you which towns and which gyms you actually reach first, you can see there is a split order to it. Because of the story, nature, aspect, etc, you have to go to Vermilion to get cut, so you end up challenging Vermilion Gym most of the time. You have to go to Celadon City to get the Rocket Hideout, so you battle Celadon Gym most of the time. You have to go to Saffron to do Silph Co, so again you do Saffron then. And then obviously some people can do Fuchsia and Cinnabar and then Saffron, or Fuchsia then Saffron rather. But not many people go to Fuchsia and then Cinnabar and completely forget about the mainland. So there is a set sort of path most people take. So that really flips on its head, because while Yes, okay, Red Blue offered you choices. Those choices were not often made, especially with Vermilion and Celadon, because the story and the plot and the plot flow of Through the Region just didn't allow you to do it or didn't really you know, give you much of a choice if you were just following and saying, oh, there's a gym, I'll challenge it. You didn't come across two gyms or you didn't have to have the option to come to this gym first and then that gym. It was a set line and really the only difference, yeah, the ones there were Fuchsia, Cinnabar and Saffron. So what options do we have for like a future game to actually restructure this? Is there a sort of structure that would fit well? Well, we could either, obviously there's a red, blue, yellow option here where you could have this sort of split up, but rather when you get to Cerulean, you actually have the option to go to Vermilion or Celadon and you have that split path. Of course, that has to work in with the plot and also the evil team stuff, so it's not an easy deal. Um, but it would be would be possible. So here's like an option for that complex path. You have maybe two gyms to begin with. Then you got three paths just going whichever way you want. And I've even complicated it a bit more by saying it's like to challenge gym eight. You also have to have done gym six and gym three. So you've sort of got to go down the left path, then head back to the centre path to do two gyms there. Then you can do the, the last gym on the first path. 
and similarly for the second path you have to do the fifth gym and then you have to head back to make sure you do the fourth then you can do so it's a lot more open plan and if it was built in the right way for the region it would definitely work however I don't think this will ever really happen in a Pokemon game because as we've seen at least especially with Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon Game Freak consistently and continue to aim the games only towards children uh, we saw with Rotom decks, we saw with the heavy hand holding through those games that really there is not much of an accommodation for the older fans which of course are the majority of the fan base I would say nowadays, or at least the loudest um, so I don't think this is going to happen because Game Freak love their tutorials and love their hand holding and they're giving them an open plan and a complex route where you actually have to you know, beat Gym 3 and then maybe there's a blockade that says go to this city and then they have to figure out that you go to this city and do the yeah, etc so there's a lot more to it than just doing it because it's just not going to happen but there are some other ideas we could look through the second one of those is sort of a choose your own adventure or just an open open world entirely so there's a first gym that you can challenge as an introduction and then you get the seven other gyms are challengeable in whatever order you want so maybe it's not like seven branch and pass maybe it's like a loop or two around the region and the gyms are set out in those cities but there's nothing stopping you from skipping over a city entirely you can go from just, just miss one gym and then keep going to the next one and maybe circle back into the next one because say you're weak to one particular gym you can just head past it train up a bit more on another gym and head back now of course the other problem as well as the complexity with this sort of structure is the leveling system would sort of get thrown out of whack because if you ended up doing you know say they were set out is two to seven is the level sort of scale but you end up doing like six and then five and then back to seven and eight and then you came out to gym two right at the end and they're like level 20 and you're level 50 that's not a challenge at all you've sort of ruined you've robbed yourself of some of the game so there would have to be some form of scaling system implemented again we're going to talk about that in the future so it's possible um, but again I don't think it would be because complexity in Game Freak hates complexity. The final idea I have or final idea I'm putting forward is similar but we've never really thought about it but why not more than eight gyms? We've seen in the Pokemon anime a lot that there are other badges in the regions that we don't see in the games you know we've seen Gary with different badges you know many different trainers Ash meets have loads of different badges that we never get to see you know, the, the gym for or anything like that, so why not a region that has more than one gym? So here, this region has 15 gyms, so almost one for every type, and you could implement some sort of system where these gyms are again scattered all around the region, and you only have to have 8 out of the 15 badges to challenge the Pokemon League. So you could go, say the region again is split into two loops, you could do one loop and do 6 gyms, head down the next loop and do like one or two more gyms and then decide to challenge the Pokemon League and leave the rest for like post game. Similarly the scaling problem would come into factor here uh, but it could be resolved and again the other problem here would be the fact that you have 15 gyms um, so obviously we had 16 gyms in, in Heart Gold, so Silver, Gold, Silver, Crystal etc so it's possible it's just whether you, if the fact that you know <laughs> again you could challenge all 15 gyms before you battle the Elite for once how high the level is going to be like level 70, level 80 I would welcome that because it's pretty cool and we always want some higher level Pokemon. But again, it's where the game would even want to consider doing something of the sort. So those are a few ideas to sort of spice up the game structure rather than just having a single line moving through. As I mentioned, it's a bit more complicated than just designing the gym path because you have to think about the plot. You have to think about the evil team, how they're going to fit in. You know, if you've got these three or four branching paths where are the evil team you know do you have like maybe dynamic events loading in so you have one sort of evil team event on each path and then eventually they come together to perform master plan or something like that so there's a lot more to talk about and a lot more to discuss than just this but it's a good starting point so of course feel free to let me know your thoughts and your ideas on the gym structure in the games whether you'd like to see any more branching paths just basically like a pick your own adventure so you could actually have some replayability to the games maybe who knows but before we end i will give you next episode's topic and i've sort of gone over it and glassed over it a bit in this episode but next episode's topic is going to be hand holding the question accompanying it is how has the level of supervision in the games changed over time so i'm using supervision as a term of not necessarily tutorialness but supervision you know you're su are you do you feel supervised in your adventure or do you feel like you can do whatever you want like in Zelda Breath of the Wild. Let me know your thoughts about that as well as what I've covered in this video down below in the comment section and I'll be sure to take some of that in when I talk about next episode's topic here, hand holding. But for now, this is going to be for today. So as I mentioned at the start, 
do check out Mark Brown. His series is amazing. I do like it. I look forward to the videos all the time. So check him out if you want to. But this will be it for me for today. So I shall see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, my friends. <laughs>